everybody, welcome to episode 72 of Films and Fermentation. That's right, we are Films and Fermentation, a movie and alcohol podcast. Tonight it's episode 72, Algebra, Bad Lunch, and Infidelity, the Evolution of High School Cinema. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. We're three friends who like to talk shit about movies while getting shit-faced. In this episode, we return to the land of homework and hormones. A time that was amazing for some and a nightmare for others. A youthful time before the jaded bitterness of adulthood takes hold. That's right. We're going back to high school. No! <laughs> Tonight, we're taking a field trip through time as we discuss the history of high school movies and cinema. When Don't you forget... wake up in the moon and then you... Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead, man. Be the theme song tonight. <laughs> uh, no, no I'm good. <laughs> Don't forget to drop us an email at filmsandfermentation at gmail.com or visit linktree.com slash filmsandfermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links. Gentlemen, what are we drinking this evening? I'll go first. Go um, I need a lot of alcohol to deal with my day. Uh, you know what? I will, of us. <laughs> I will start. Well, I got two. and I'm, Let me see. Where should I start? I'll, I'll go by, based on... Lowest ABV. So uh, yeah. this I, this is like serendipitous. I found this in my fridge. Head high. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Indian pale ale. Head high. Uh, from Ocean, New Jersey. Canned in Ocean, New Jersey. Uh, from Cane Brewing Company. I like the cane. It is, yeah. Head high Cane Brewing Company. I'm trying to see if it has any information. 6.6% 6 .6 alcohol by volume. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's all the information I have. It's a, yeah. I guess it's a basic Indian pale ale. And then following that, I got another Indian pale ale, which is Level Up Tropical from Yards. <laughs> uh, this is also 6.5. Oh, this is going to be a tough call, guys. Uh, this also reminds me of high school when, uh, you know, Nintendo was king. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually PlayStation. So uh, where do I go, guys? Bottle or can? Well the head high reminds me of those, you know, kind of after dark, not quite X, but not, but beyond R movies they had in the 80s. <laughs> Skinamax? <laughs> no, you mean, not quite Skinamax, but, you know, just you mean the the, uh, the squiggled cable channel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you had to get it just right. So I, uh, I was thinking, like, what am I going to do tonight? Like, I always try to find something, like, themed. Um, and I really like, I thought about looking to see if I could find Zima. <laughs> it was like, some know, Jolly Ranchers? Some Jolly Ranchers. Because when, you know, when you're in high school and you're yeah. trying, to, trying to sneak a drink, it's either cheap beer or cheap liquor because you don't know any better. <laughs> uh, I, uh, unfortunately, Zima is no longer in production. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so I couldn't get Zima. And I thought, like, well, I could always go buy a bottle of, like, Aftershock or Everclear. Or, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Paps, maybe, a little, like, Bud Light or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? No, fuck it. Beer is beer. Beer is good enough. I'm just going with beer, and I'm not going to go kill myself trying to get something, like, ridiculous, like Miller or something like that. Like Head High? Uh, yeah, so, like, Head High. <laughs> well, I'm drinking one of the ones that uh, Mike gave me from Breckenridge Brewery. This one's called the Juice Drop Hazy IPA. Uh, it is 7% alcohol by volume, and it is very, very bitter. Really bitter. Yeah. Like, I'm going to drink it because I don't like wasting beer, but when I kill this one, Mike, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm probably going right to a uh, crab cake and, and uh, football after this one. <laughs> so, I, I looked into my book, the uh, Go Ahead and Make My Drink book, and I mm -hmm. found one that's sort of themed. Okay. It's called the Marty McFly. Ah, nice. <laughs> and it, it, they made this drink based on the first two movies. Mm -hmm. The first movie was the bourbon he's drinking with his mother in the car. Mm -hmm. And the second one was when he follows his son and he ordered a Pepsi. So <laughs> it is bourbon, Pepsi, and bitters. Nice. And then and in the third movie, movie, it was bullet. just plain old whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It is. And I'm using bullet, so. 
Well, I have bourbon and I have bitters. I just need to get some uh, Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to go to Wawa get a bottle of Pepsi. Yeah. I, I, I really... think more accurate would have been Tab, guys. Tab, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it went with, you know, his son ordered Pepsi. Mm. <laughs> I always have ginger ale and Sprite in, in my house because I use those mainly for mixing my, my, my uh, heavy drinks. Yeah. Uh, I don't normally have Pepsi or Coke, so I have to go get a Pepsi so I can try that out. Um, usually I don't mix Pepsi. I usually use, use Coke as a mixer. Mm. You know? I think sometimes Pepsi's too sweet. To mix yeah, but up. I think that's kind of the point of the drink, I think. It is. It, it's it is. sweet and it bitter. You're putting the bitters in there, so it kind of it cancels it out. All right. It's Mike. just a dash. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go take us to our next segment there, Mike? This day in film history. In 1973, American Graffiti directed by George Lucas, opens in cinemas across the United States. We always end up with something very apropos in the uh, This Week in Film History thing. We so do. we're talking talk about high, high school films, and that's one of the iconic high school films of the 70s. Yep. Yes. And I know we I talked about it before. Put it on here. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we talked about it before a little bit because it's, uh, you know, one of George Lucas's early works. Who was it? Harrison Ford, um, Ron Howard, Ron Howard, Richard Dreyfus. Mm-hmm. Um, who's who? Uh, there's sh- not Shirley. No, yeah, it was Shirley of Laverne and Shirley. I can't think um, of the actress's name. Yeah, I, I can. Penny Marshall was Laverne. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I can't think of the actress who played um, Shirley. Shirley. She actually tried out for Leia in Star Wars. Oh, did she? Yeah, she was one of the actresses who read for it. I just can't think of her name right now. <laughs> uh, it's not important. We'll figure it out later. And Wolfman Jack was also. And Wolfman funny. Jack. <laughs> oh, you can have a 70s film without Wolfman Jack. Yeah, Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack had a Saturday morning cartoon in the 80s as well. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. A radio personality gets so much play. A <laughs> radio personality had a Saturday a morning cartoon. Jerry Blavitt. <laughs> oh, please. You know, you know me and Jerry Blavitt. <laughs> I think you and I have the same opinion. <laughs> Cindy Williams, that's the actress who played Charlie. There you go. There you go. Will Man Jack, bringing you your next back for this day in film history. This week in 1986, <laughs> this spectacular movie was released. Go ahead, Mike. Transformers! <laughs> oh, One in me, eye. The real Transformers, the movie, was released this day. <laughs> you got the touch. You got the power. <laughs> Dad to be stupid. Dad to be... Dad Aside stupid. from being an awesome cartoon and a, and a fun movie and an obvious product placement for uh, the new Mattel line. <laughs> had a great soundtrack. <laughs> had a great, great soundtrack, man. <laughs> and I had the DVD. I still have it. And... um I don't think I have it next to me here. Oh, yes, I do. Here it is. Transformers, the movie, on DVD. <laughs> I have it downstairs. I have to uh, change my background here because it has me on the other side here. I want to do – hold on. Where is my at? Where am I at? Where would I go? Oh, no. You're a pop. I, I disappeared. It's magic. Never mind. I was trying to do the mirror thing because it has it backwards on the screen here. But Transformers the movie, and when you pop well, up, it, it looks, it looks, it looks red fine for yeah, us. red fine for us. Uh-oh. Right there, there's your chapter Bye, list. There's chapter your chapter list. list, right? Chapter eleven, the swear word. Swear word. <laughs> the swear word. My favorite part of the movie. Oh shit! What are we gonna do? <laughs> Oh god, I love that freaking movie. Somebody brought it up on Twitter recently. Um, man, the responses that we that people were given for it was great because it was like, yeah, you know, that movie has a lot more love than I thought it had. Maybe we should do a deep dive on that movie. Oh, I would love to do a deep dive on that movie. I think we'd have to do a viewing again. <laughs> Just oh, yeah. that, you know, we should do like a, a viewing and a show at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on here, I'm looking for it. Uh, maybe that's the one we should do with Kevin's pool. 
Yeah. Yeah. Transformers uh, the I movie. I want to talk to you guys about that at the end of the show. So yeah. we'll talk about okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, never mind. I can't Ooh. find it now. It's too far back in my Twitter logs here. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Moving, moving on. on. This day in film history and our fun drink fact, Michael. Our fun drink fact is about central Central Hazy IPA from Thomas Tucker Brewing Company in Bloomfield, Connecticut. It is an orange and ha- it's orange and hazy, but not that not the crazy orange juice of Pekinsey. I'm having bad bad English tonight. Um, blah, blah, blah. the citro blends citrus, amarillo, and Columbus hops for ripe mango, sweet orange, lemon peel, and pineapple flavors with a hint of dank juniper aromatics. 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 <laughs> so, another hazy IPA for your boys. You All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to pour this one into a glass because if the hazy IPAs have that sediment at the bottom, I'm afraid to see how much this one has because <laughs> super bitter. I don't normally point out the people who follow us on Twitter because, you know, we're currently at 565 followers. What? Yeah. So I, uh, but I wanted to point out this one just because I love the dedication that this guy has to his Twitter account. Uh, we recently were given a follow by Winston Zettimore. <laughs> at Winston Zedemo, the Twitter account is dedicated to the most underappreciated Ghostbuster. Hashtag give Winston a story. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought and, that was um, a fun it's one. It's a shame because <laughs> he should have been. I mean, if Eddie Murphy had gotten the role, then it probably would have been a more uh, uh, popular character or mm-hmm. more larger uh, character. Know, larger character. Poor Ernie Hudson. I watched Ghostbusters last night, and totally unrelated to this, this guy just followed us a few minutes ago. <laughs> I, I watched it last night because I was working on the theme song for the show, and I just had it on mm-hmm. in the background. And there are a lot of scenes where it's like all three guys are like real focused in the center, and Ernie Hudson's like either behind them or, or like right. or like cut <laughs> off by like the box screen, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of a shame. He does get a he does get a lot of play in Ghostbusters Afterlife, but they kind of like make it up to him in that in that film. So I've yet to see it. It wasn't bad. It was pretty good. Was, I'm looking forward great, to watching it. It was fun. It was it was it was uh, it is what it was. You know. <laughs> All right. Notes from the last show, Mike. As you said, it'd be nice if we can start a program without having to say uh, "rest in peace" to a celebrity. So over the last few weeks, we lost a number of actors from gangster films. We lost some sci-fi actors last week. And considering one of the movies we're going to be talking about starred this person, it's kind of weird that she passed away this week. Olivia Newton-John, star of Mm -hmm. Reese, passed away this week at 73 years old. She was battling cancer for a long time, though. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I had read about online, yeah. Um, John Travolta gave a really nice uh, tribute to her online. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a picture of him and her from the movie, him and her from the 20th anniversary of the film, and then she and him recently before she passed away. And it's kind of cool. They were sitting in the car in each picture, looking back yeah. at the camera. I think I saw that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had a movie that I forgot for my list of true stories that we did in the last episode. I wanted to put The Trial of the Chicago 7 on there. So that was a good one. Uh, Kevin's still adding to that list right now. Hmm? Kevin's still Kevin's still adding to that list now. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> now that he knows the field's based on a true story, he's really trying to. He's he's looking at every single film he's ever watched to see if he can add it to the list. This could have been real. This could have been real. This could have been real. <laughs> could have happened. It really could have. Trial of Chicago happen, Seven guys? was a really really good film. Um, it's on Netflix. Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, Eddie Redmayne, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Mark Rylance. It's a really good film. Uh, based on the trial of seven protesters uh, who were protesting the Vietnam War in Chicago back in the 60s. A uh, new series on Netflix just began, The Sandman by Neil Gaiman. The trailer looks awesome. Yeah. I, no, I, I read the, the graphic novel that it's based on. 
And I know that studios for decade, a couple of decades now, because it came out in like the 80s. Yeah. I've been trying to buy the rights to it to adapt it for the screen. And Neil Gaiman has kept saying no, uh, because he didn't want it to be destroyed the way like Watchmen where it was and things like that. Truncated. He wanted, yeah, he wanted it, you know, because the studio didn't understand the story. It's not an action story. It's not, you know, um, it's not like Constantine with Keanu Reeves. It's it's a real slow burn, like philosophical, um, existential story. And Neil Gaiman fought it and fought it and fought it until he was able to get control over the script production. So it's, it's series, produced so. by yeah. So it's a series on Netflix. He's one of the executive producers of it, and one of the writers of the screenplay as well. So it's a little more faithful to his story, and not as as you know bastardized as it would have been if, if a studio had just bought the rights and did it themselves. Wait, right. are you saying movie studios go and change creative and artistic uh, visions for yeah. their own profit? Yeah. I am he, shocked. If you want to see the, the best example of it ever is World War Z. Oh my God! <laughs> World War Z is one of the most creative and intelligent novels that I've read in the last twenty years. The only thing it has in common with the movie it's based on is the fucking title. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this, uh, I've only watched the first episode so far, and the first episode is, was really good, pretty intriguing. Um, got some familiar faces from Game of Thrones on it too. Uh, also, um, I think, um, um, what's your name from uh, Doctor Who? Is yeah, a... uh, Jenna Coleman, who played Clara <laughs> for yeah. the 11th and 12th Doctor, she's on it. She plays Johanna Constantine. Um, and then uh, the guy that they got to play, the Sandman, the, the main character, the, the God of Dreams. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're using CGI or makeup effects or whatever, but this dude is so accurately like he looks exactly like the comic book drawing. Oh wow. Like like down to the the you know size of his like muscles. Like it's he looks like the comic book drawing. It's it's pretty uncanny. So I don't know if it's it's if it's makeup effects or special effects or CGI or whatever, but the guy that got to play it is eerily like he just walked off the comic book. So also, uh, like I said, Netflix. I've only watched your first episode, so you know judgment is still standing on it. Also, out on Netflix for Kevin, Uncharted. Yeah, I just saw yes. that just, mm -hmm. just premiered. Gotta as well. watch that. Yeah, yeah, that. I yeah. It. No, I saw that that popped up too. So uh, I will try to catch that. I've been um, going through uh, Prime and The Outlaws, and um, the Outlaws was actually, really good this season. The Outlaws was very good and. Ended up watching Lightyear. <laughs> I just watched the Gray Man, the, the Gray Man on Netflix, mm -hmm. and I watch it because it's the Russo brothers. Mm -hmm. um, it stars Chris Evans, Ryan Gosling, and most import importantly, Anna de Armas. And uh, it was a, it was okay. <laughs> it was like pretty generic, like okay. pretty generic, like action film. Uh, if, um, Kevin, if you want to laugh, and you got like thirty minutes, you can watch the whole series of I Am Groot. <laughs> there's, there's five episodes, six minutes each. <laughs> <laughs> I check them out later. <laughs> and uh, Kev, the second half of season two of Resident Alien dropped today. I recorded it. I wanted to watch it with my wife, so we're going to watch it later tonight. I believe. So yeah, it's only M uh, NBC or Sci-Fi and Peacock only release an episode at a time. Um, so the first episode dropped today, and I watched it this morning, and it was pretty good. Hmm. It's a good, it, 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 it went in a direction I wasn't expecting, given where it left off. So. Oh, that's a sorry. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. checking something. <laughs> ah, success. Hey. Hey. Well, we got two Kevin. <laughs> we got Kevin and his evil twin. Oh, Kevin. which one should I go with, though? Kev man looks a little grainy. Yeah, he does. <laughs> It looks very grainy. All right. Well, that works. So, you can leave goodbye. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can we do? They're both ugly. Like, They're both ugly, like, but one's grainy, one's not. Okay. <laughs> Face for podcasts. <laughs>
So that brings us tonight to our main segment. Tonight's segment is the evolution of high school in cinema, or as I called it, Algebra, Bad Lunch, and Infidelity, which is a line from the movie Clerks. What's high school all about? It's about algebra, bad lunch, and infidelity. You mean uh, the so we, pizza lunch, right? What's that? The square pizza lunch, right? Square pizza lunch, or like, uh, <laughs> I remember the, the high school I went to, One they used to serve um, on Thursday spaghetti and meatballs, and it looked like somebody's leftovers. Oh. It was like congealed tomato sauce. And like that. Uh, <laughs> they used to serve a, a veal parmesan sandwich on on like Wednesdays at my high school. And uh, if you've never had processed veal parm before, <laughs> how can they get away with that in South Philadelphia? No shit. <laughs> Spaghetti whole... and meatballs and veal parm sandwich. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when you went there, it was all. Italian, we all went through that. I mean, it was it was Italian and Irish mainly, <laughs> but like, uh, but yeah, like, and and I remember them. They del they were delivering the food one morning when we were all hanging out in the schoolyard, and we we saw the boxes coming off the truck, and it said the food was grade D edible. <laughs> like we, our food that we got served at lunch was one grade above being poison. <laughs> <laughs> So that's high wow. school, folks. That's high school for you. <laughs> what's even what's even sadder is you went back to teach and ate the lunches then too, didn't you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> and when I went back to teach, it was a different school. It was it was you know combined with the sister school, and uh, and the lunches. Not that they were better. Um, they were just slightly better than. than so they were grade C. They were yeah. They were like grade C minus at this point. <laughs> um. So. What I just uh, decided to go with tonight was instead of doing like just a general list or picking out our favorites or a bracket or all that stuff, why don't we look at how high school films have been portrayed in cinema throughout the decades, starting with some of the earliest films and working our way up to current. And so okay. on Twitter this morning, or actually last night I posted this, I posted a, uh, a poll on Twitter. And I asked our, our followers, uh, tomorrow night, we're going to be recording episode 72, The Evolution of High School Cinema. Which decade had the best movies to take place in high school? Was it the 70s? For example, Grease, Carrie, uh, and American Graffiti. Was it the 80s with movies like Ferris Bueller, Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Or was it the 90s with movies like American Pie and Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Or was it the 2000s with movies like Superbad and Easy A? We got 30 total votes, and this is how it broke down. In last place, with 7% of the votes, the 70s. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Tied for second place with 13% of the vote each, the 90s and 2000s. Meaning that the 80s took a commanding lead in first place with 67% of the votes. <laughs> and I, I have to say, and a couple of people uh, uh, dropped some like uh, uh, comments on it too. One of them was, I hope you're going to talk about um, Dazed and Confused. It's an underrated high school film. And I said, definitely, it'll definitely be on, you know, the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the comments we got was, um, I love American Pie but the eighties was a much stronger decade. So I thought, okay, you know, that's, a, that's, I mean, that's kind of how, like, I think the three of us feel like we love a lot of the movies from the nineties as, as much as we do the eighties. So it's like tough to like choose between those two decades, at least in my opinion, I don't know. I still feel, feel free to comment if you want. It's a three man I, podcast. Yeah, I'm trying I, to get I, a think, I think the eighties had a, had a broader, um, genre because a lot of that, the horror movies were all about you know, high school students. And, well, you had a few in the '90s too because you had Scream in the '90s, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm sure there were a couple other ones. If I if I think about it hard enough, The but, Craft, The Craft. Yeah. So what I did was, yeah. uh, <laughs> if you look, The Craft, of course, for the bulk. If Absolutely. you look on um, the uh, the shared docs, there, gentlemen, I gave you uh, links to the different decades, and these take you to. Um, Wikipedia lists, uh, so you can see like what I'm looking at here. So, okay. according to Wikipedia, the first film that's really considered like a high school film came out in the 1930s, and it's a film called Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Um, it's considered a classic. It was an Oscar-winning film. I've never seen it. I mean, it's really 
old. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a lot of movies, but I can honestly say I haven't seen this one. But I, what I know about it is it's a high school film, but it focuses mainly on the teacher. Uh, it's kind of like if you want like a modern day comparison, think like Mr. Holland's Opus with uh, Richard Dreyfuss. So like was that's... this played by Peter O'Toole? There might have been a, Mr. Chips. There might have been a remake later okay. on with Peter O'Toole. Um, this is actually like even before like Peter O'Toole was acting. Yeah, uh, this Robert, was uh, uh, Robert Robert Denae uh, and Greer Garson. Okay. 1934 novel Goodbye Mr. Chips was the basis for this film. And there the, was a remake in 1969 with Peter O'Toole. With yeah. Peter O'Toole, yeah, yeah. I had a feeling there was like a remake. Then we get to the 40s, and this is why I call this the Age of Innocence. You have a 1940 film called High School, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, an American teen comedy uh, about a 13 year old tomboy sent to her widow, widowed father's ranch uh, and to learn at Thomas Jefferson High School. And hilarity and tomfoolery ensue. <laughs> <laughs> and then in 1946, you have American, you have a high school hero. Uh, it's the third in a series of movies called The Teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, wait a minute. You skipped the. But uh... I skipped the first one because I don't know what to think of this. In 19. 19- Forty one. Uh, Forty one, an American comedy film starring Mickey Rooney mm-hmm. came out called Andy Hardy's Private Secretary. And it's the tenth of sixteen film. It's supposed to be <laughs> a high school film, but sounds like the title of a porno. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Hardy's Private Secretary. <laughs> Even the name Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a week from the end of high school, Andy Hardy, played by Mickey Rooney, is anticipating graduation, but is putting more effort into running various student committees, most of which he chairs, then studying for his examinations. Wow, it sounds riveting. Wasn't this made yeah. into a remake with Maggie Gyllenhaal and... Um... <laughs> <laughs> and James Spader? Yes. Yeah, James Spader? <laughs> That one had a lot more, uh, <laughs> a lot more uh, sadomasochism than the original one did. Wow. <laughs> hey. All righty then. Mike, if you've never seen the film Secretary, don't watch it with Adrian in the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on to the 50s. <laughs> Why not? Might as well. It's still innocent at this point. <laughs> 1954, we have The Flying Classroom. I don't know anything about this, but I kind of want to watch it. It's a German film. (laughs) That's Flying Classroom. A West German family comedy. Uh, It doesn't really say anything about what the film is about. (laughs) Just said that it was made in Munich. That's it. You know, got nothing else about it. The Happiest Days of Our Life, High School Hellcats. High School Hellcats has an awesome movie poster. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It also looks mm-hmm. like a porn film. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about like high school. I, I missed yeah. out on a lot of this in high school. So Yeah, so like for, for, for like, you know, the age of innocence, man, there's a lot of like really porny looking films in this mm-hmm. era. Okay, like this Ripening Youth? 1958 American Exploitation Film. There you go. Mm-hmm. It was released as a double feature with a movie called Hot Rod Gang. <laughs> uh, so it's about a girl who uh, gets uh, pulled into this like high school gang called the Hellcats. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of those like early exploitation. Is that where films. they? Do, 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 do. No, for that you need to go to the 1960s. Uh. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We got on this time, time machine of ours. On this time machine of ours. So uh, I should mention this. Like movies in the fifty are German. Yeah. So German I movies. I should mention that we're trying to skip over films that are not American just for the sake of time here. Um, but because we are not that familiar with these early decade films, we're kind of like falling into a trap, like Matken in uniform. Yeah. <laughs> ripening, and ripening youth, youth which ripening is also youth. a German drama. Can we just say, like, all right? I need. I just want to focus on three films right now: Andy Hardy's Private Secretary, <laughs> Ripening Youth, Couple Form, Couple Form, Ripening Youth, 
and, and high and, school Hellcats and high school Hellcats. <laughs> like, yeah, um, like it's a, <laughs> put, your, a, put your mouse over top of the form and look at the movie poster mm-hmm. for, for what high school Hellcats? No, no top, top of the, the form. form. Oh, top of the form. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Page of Innocence, my ass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Film drawn inspiration from Will Hayes' 1937 classic, Good Morning Boys. <laughs> the 1950s feels a little rapey. <laughs> a little something. A little bit corny. It's all that repressed sexual energy that got mm. gets released in the 1960s. <laughs> They needed the 1960s. The 19 people in the 1950s were about to burst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Top of the form, ladies and gentlemen out there listening, all you need to do is look up uh, high school films by decade on Wikipedia to see the craziness that we are witnessing right now. So I went to the 1960s high school films, and I am disturbed by the fact that something is missing from that list. A very important film came out in the 60s that takes place in high school and should be on this list. It is a musical. It won an Oscar for Best Picture and was recently remade by Steven Spielberg. Oh, West Side Story. West Side Story is not on this list. Mm. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of a high school film. I mean, it, it's kids. They are kids, but there there's no high school around. Yeah, I mean, there's a dance. There's one dance. Yeah, that's how Tony and Maria meet. That's true. <laughs> I mean, we, we we all can't be Andy Hardy's private secretary. No. <laughs> Some of us have to be based on Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> but what else do we have in 19? We have a 1968 film called High School. Mm-hmm. A documentary, documentary film. Wow. About a Pennsylvania yeah. high school. Look at that. Northeast High this... School in Philadelphia. Oh, what? Shit. Yeah. High School is a 1968 American documentary film by Frederick Wiseman. Shows a typical day for students and faculty at a Pennsylvania high school during the late 60s. Uh, it was shot over five weeks between March and April 68 at Northeast High School in Philadelphia, PA. The film was not shown in Philadelphia at the time that it was released because of Weissman's concerns over what he called vague talk of a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the vague talk of a lawsuit is still around today in 2022 at Northeast High School. <laughs> If that was the case, they'd never make any movies about high schools. <laughs> the last time they did a documentary about a high school in Philadelphia it was Lincoln High when Tony Danza would talk there for a year. Oh, that was also Northeast. He wasn't at Was Lincoln. that Northeast? I thought it was Lincoln. Mm-hmm. No, he was at Northeast. My sister-in-law graduated from Northeast High School. <laughs> I want to find this now to see like what could possibly be the lawsuit. <laughs> yes. The Human Pyramid. <laughs> Predecessor to the Human Centipede. Oh, no. <laughs> Where did their mouths go? <laughs> uh, this is a French film. It's a La, French film. La Pyramide Humain. Oh. <laughs> it's documentary fiction. Isn't that kind of like a uh, oxymoron? Yes. <laughs> documentary fiction. Wouldn't that be called a mockumentary now? Yeah. <laughs> if. <laughs> There's another That's film. An English film. Yeah, British Ladder song. Skate, De Metier. Yeah, like, like I I feel like they're, they're missing some movies here. To mm. serve oh, with here love. we go. To Serve With Love, which stars Sidney Poitier. Sydney Poitier. To serve With Love. Still, this is a British drama. <laughs> this is a British drama, but I think it takes place in America. Yeah. Um, classic movie. Classic. Yeah, it's a classic film. Sidney Poitier, any movie with <clears> Sidney Poitier is a classic. Um. <laughs> It's wait, look at the tagline for this film. A story, a story as, as fresh, fresh as, as the, the girls in their minis. minis. <laughs> and as tough as the kids in his East London school. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> a story as fresh as the girls in their minis. Oh my god. <laughs> 
you may need a rating on this episode. <laughs> it's crazy how much sexualization there is with high school related to high school movies in the sixties, especially. Mm-hmm. Here, it seems like, and even in well, the fifties, seems man. from the forties and the fifties too. <laughs> Andy Hardy's uh, private secretary. It doesn't get any better when you get to the seventies and eighties. No, I'm it doesn't. Sure. Oh my god, because when you get to the eighties and nineties, they're actually allowed to show the sex on screen. So it's like <laughs> up the down staircase is the last one. <laughs> Uh, it's the first assignment of a young idealistic teacher. I've heard of this one, but I've never seen it. Hey, it's an American characters. movie, though. It's I think it's an American movie. <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's based on a on a novel too. Yeah, probably. that's why it's like familiar to me. So we're going to get into the seventies now, which we're, I feel like we're going to be coming across some movies that we know a little bit better now. <laughs> this seventies list is missing some films as well, such as. It is missing American, American Graffiti. Graffiti. I wonder if they consider it uh, teen films from the seventies. Maybe. Yeah, but I mean, like it's it's a high school film. Yeah. Hey, you know what? This is Wikipedia. We can always add it ourselves. Yes, I know. Right. <laughs> I think the thing with, with American Graffiti is because it's mostly about them getting ready to graduate, so it's not like yeah. so much about the high school itself. Whereas something like Carrie, which is on <laughs> this list, is definitely a high school film. I mean, yeah. it starts out with that whole, you know, uh, humiliating scene in the shower at the beginning mm-hmm. that leads to the humiliating scene at the prom. <laughs> Which leads to a lot of... Leads to one of the most brutal murder scenes. <laughs> she just wanted to scare him. This is why no, they're not... all going to laugh at you! <laughs> <laughs> this is why you should not bully kids in school, kids. Yes, because you never know who's got telekinetic power and who's going to kill you, Tom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, they're all going to laugh at you. <laughs> well, this is one of the first films for John Travolta. Yes, it is. He gets. Yeah, I forgot it was in Carrie. In it too. Who is it? Who is it? Greece it has one of my favorite lines in it from Greece. What's that? If you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. <laughs> That's Greece. I was still talking about Carrie. Oh, you're still talking about I said, Gary. yeah, John Travolta was in Carrie. <laughs> oh, okay. He was one of the like boyfriends of the girls that were teasing Carrie. He gets killed in a car at the end, like she crushes the car that he's in or something. Uh so yeah, it's so like I mean in the 70s, there's a few films that I'm I'm sure are missing from this list here. Um, but mainly we got Carrie, we got Greece, we got American Graffiti. Um, What's this one? How to seduce your teacher? How to seduce your teacher? I don't know. Yeah. This is an Italian film. <laughs> <laughs> La leciale seduce i professori, <laughs> which actually literally translates as the high school girl seduces her teachers. <laughs> uh, the Hollywood High that's above that one is a 1977 American sex comedy film. <laughs> A stockingly inept piece of teen sexportation. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are like uncovering a very seedy underbelly to the uh, movie market in in the fifties, sixties, and seventies. <laughs> we are. Can we go back to the wholesome grease <laughs> from the from the from the from the possibly pornographic <laughs> to the straight to the up very to the straight morbid. up exploitative. <laughs> This is this is this is because I like the next one on the list. I asked, I asked to accuse Clava K of, of, of my death. <laughs> That's definitely German. That's a Soviet film. Soviet film. There you go. Sounds like a Klingon kind of. Film. Yeah, the possessed. <laughs> here we go. We got a horror film here. The possessed. Well, Carrie well, was, was a horror kind of, film. Carrie was kind of a horror film. Too, Carrie yeah. was a horror. Well, Carrie's a Stephen King. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's spend some time talking about Greece, so we can actually like wash the taste out of our mouth. I always thought Greece was like one of those films that had like a little bit of exploitation to it, but it's kind of fucking tame now. <laughs> <ready to go. laughs> it's like the, <laughs> compared to these talking, other ones. I mean, they're talking about teen pregnancy in it, and <laughs> teen pregnancy. There's like, uh, uh, there's you the, know, do you know what he means? <laughs> <laughs> There's changing your, yourself both physically and fundamentally to get the guy at the end. <laughs> well, he did the same thing, you know. He went to become a jock. Yeah, but then yeah. he became, he basically went back to being who he was because she changed herself. Yeah, well. Better shape up. 
Does that mean? <laughs> I, I, uh, one of the things that came about, re- or I guess since, since the internet's been around, boys, uh, <laughs> one of the um, theories, one of the, con- and not controversies, but theories about the actual ending of the movie, it comes out that, um, what's her name? Sand- Sandra D was actually dead. dead yeah. You know? And the whole thing kind of plays out in her mind, and and the end is her ascending into heaven or something. Yeah, yeah she, she actually like drowned on the beach or something at the yeah. beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I think we we talked about that. I think on our our conspiracy theory yeah. episode back in like season yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good day. It sounds familiar. Um, I <laughs> I remember when I was teaching high school, and uh, one year with my class we read uh, Oedipus the King. And we all know that Oedipus ends with him killing his father and marrying his mother. So I had the kids come up with a project where they had to rewrite Oedipus as a modern play. And one of the kids adapted Grease for Oedipus and Mm -hmm. changed the lyrics of the song Sandy to Mommy. (laughs) And then sung it in front of class. (laughs) Oh, man. Mommy. That kid should have gotten 100 and extra credit. And then I yeah I gave her a hundred and then sent her to the guidance counselor. <laughs> <laughs> Did you oh, know man. there was uh, uh, in the works they were trying to do a prequel to uh, Greece called Summer Lovin'? Really? Yeah, by Paramount Pictures. I know that you know when we get to our next decade, the eighties, we have Greece Two with Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm. Um, not a great film. <laughs> no. I love Greece. Greece is a it's that that's definitely a classic to me. Grease is a word. Yeah, it is the word. The word that you heard. That groove. <laughs> that meaning. <laughs> Chicks will scream. <laughs> Chicks will scream. Grease lightning. My, uh, I love the uh, song with the uh, uh, the angel. Uh, beauty school dropout. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, his his advice to her is to uh, is to join the steno pool. <laughs> Harry Belafonte. I forgot. About it wasn't that. Harry Belafonte. It's Frankie. <laughs> he was white. <laughs> You're thinking Beetlejuice. You're... That's right. That's right. Harry Belafonte. <laughs> it would be a Caribbean song then. <laughs> All righty. So I, I'm looking at the plot of The Possessed. Mm-hmm. It says Kevin Lee. An alcoholic Catholic priest who has strayed from his faith crashes his car and is pronounced dead at the scene. As Tennis is sent back to Earth to fight evil as an exorcist and returns to life. At the Helen Page School, a Catholic all girls college in Salem, Oregon. <laughs> I, gar- I the- guarantee you there's a scene of the girls in the shower. <laughs> that's like for movies for the, if you're talking about the 70s 80s you know like Porky's uh, well, no. Police Academy <laughs> this movie like in the eight, there's always a shower scene with the girls <laughs> well and horror films mm-hmm. are always um, a morality play Harrison Ford's in this movie The Possessed? yeah <laughs> Harrison Ford is Paul Wyndham Not listening to Tom. I now have to see this. <laughs> he should, that should have made it oh, to yeah. the. I know. Uh, we, did know all, we did all the movies. The whole thing on Harrison how did, we, how did we miss that one? We probably like skipped over it because we didn't know anything about it. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Harrison <laughs> Ford. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Well, all right. We are back oh. from our little mini break here. We had to stop to get some refreshments, refill our beers and drinks and stuff because we need it considering how uh, spicy these films have turned out to be that we weren't expecting from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, But we are now moving on to the decade that won the poll for the best decade for high school films. That is the 80s, and we're going to spend some time on this because there's definitely some movies on here that we've all seen. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a lot. A lot, there's starting a with lot. all the right moves. Yes, that is uh, Tom Cruise. Early, early Tom Cruise film where he oh, plays yeah. a football player. Yep. I mean, 
This is probably this is 1983. So it's around the same time he did The Outsiders, um, which is one mm -hmm. of his first films as well. Would you consider The Outsiders a high school film? No. No. Call it a teen film. Yeah. Teen film, but not school. necessarily The Outsiders. School. There's mention of high school. There's a couple scenes with and the basis Tony of Boyd the, stuff, the but... book is Disney doing a book report or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, kind of, I guess. Yeah, I would say it's probably more like a teen film then. Yeah. Uh, next one on the list here is The Breakfast Club. I like the quintessential, mm -hmm. quintessential uh, '80s film, '80s mm -hmm. school film. Yeah, arguably John Hughes's most complete film. Uh, archetypes for characters that become, you know, the, the popular form of character in most teen films. <clears throat> your jock, your rebel, your valley girl, nerd. your weird girl, your nerd, evil principal, all that stuff. And it's funny because even though the film came out so long ago, 19, what was it, 84 or something, 85, um, I had a lot of students who, even in the 2000s, really related to The Breakfast Club. You know, even though it wasn't about a group of kids on their cell phones all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is what the remake would be. <laughs> uh, Can't Buy Me Love. Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey. Yeah. He was Man, in a couple. Uh, he was in a couple. What was the other one he was in? in, in uh, uh, License to Drive. Yeah. Um, which isn't necessarily a high school film. That's more of a teen comedy, I would say. But yeah, Can't Buy Me Love is the high school one that he was in. Amanda Peterson, a nerd at high school in Tucson, gives a cheerleader $1,000 to pretend to be his girlfriend for a month. And what do you know? They fall in love. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, that old chestnut. The first of that old chestnut, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there's probably other one. Class of '84. They've ever seen this one. An action thriller. Uh, no. no. Crime action thriller. No, never. Class of Tom Holland. Class so. Class of '84 <laughs> is, a, is a wild film. Um, it's a like futuristic dystopian kind of story, uh, where the future dystopian era is 1984. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, it's 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 uh, a crazy movie, man. Is it based off of the H.G. Uh, uh, Wells? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Wait, not H.G. Wells. Orson uh, Wells, George, right? George Orwell, the 1984 novel. George Orwell. Yes, yeah, has nothing yeah. to do with that. <laughs> Class of 84 is like one of those like weird like 80s sort of like exploitative, violent action films. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to skip a few. I'm not going to go through all the things on this list because there's some I've oh, never seen. So. We should cut Skip the next one real quick. We're definitely oh. which one? Cutting class. Yeah, because it, I'm looking at it. It's a it's a, thr a slasher film, but it's Brad Pitt's first role, <laughs> and it has Roddy McDowell in it. Roddy <laughs> McDowell is also in class of 1984. <laughs> 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 I've never heard of this one. Like, Brad Pitt. Yeah. Yeah, Brad Pitt. Is, yeah. Here's a picture of him on the poster there. Yeah. That is a young, young Brad Pitt. It is. <laughs> Jeez. He's like a baby in that picture. Then we got Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, dude. Uh, I think it's easy to say any film that has the word high, high or high school in the title is a high school film. Mm -hmm. Fast Times at Ridgemont coming, High. It, it's a coming of age film. Come coming of that. age film. It's a Cam and Crow's first screenplay. It is uh, the debut of Sean Penn. Yep. Who'd have thought after mm -hmm. being after playing Spinelli in that film that he would go on to be like the serious, you know, yeah. actor that he is today? And don't you know, forget about Phoebe Cates. And Phoebe Cates. Uh, Phoebe yeah. Cates, Jennifer Jason Leigh. Um, what was it? Judge uh, Judge Reinhold. <clears throat> Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz. Nick, Nick Cage. Cage. <laughs> Back when he was Nicky Coppola. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, oh my god, Forrest Whitaker was in that. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like I, I the most iconic scene is of course the Phoebe Cates cutting out of the pool. So mm -hmm. exactly. One of yeah. the most paused moments in moments in film history film history. What which was actually brought in on Stranger Things. Yeah. They talked about that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, because it, it, was it like uh, they pa- she paused the movie at an hour or thirty minutes or whatever it was, and it's like she has to be, you know, like movies. <laughs> nobody, yeah, nobody pauses at that moment unless they like boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's wrong with that word? I like boobies. You like boobies. We like boobies. <laughs> uh, Footloose. Our Kevin Bacon. Uh, classic. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Uh, is this still the greatest movie that ever was ever made? Never was. <laughs> Never was. <laughs> <laughs> of course, nineteen eighty four musical drama, starring. Uh, oh, this takes me. Uh... No, go ahead. Okay. What are you gonna say? I was just gonna say, Mike had uh, admitted to finishing uh, *Umbrella Academy* season three. Mm-hmm. What did you think of this uh, episode one, Michael? Where they did the oh, uh, yeah, they did yeah, the dance. Yeah, was... <laughs> Kick up uh, Sunday. I, I liked um, later on when uh, what's his name was getting hit by cars. <laughs> Klaus. Klaus, Klaus, yeah. Klaus was getting Poor hit Klaus. by cars. <laughs> No, but that was a great scene, and it kind of like it's fun because it's like you know they had the big dance scene in the first season. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that's like kind of like with each season, that's like a running gag. You know, they do, they do right. another da- dance routine. So yeah, from Footloose with the uh, <laughs> our hero Kevin Bacon. Wait, 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 that's what people think sticks out of their butts. <laughs> Who put, the stick Who put the sticks up their butts? It's was this also Chris Ooh. Penn? Wasn't Chris yeah, Penn? Chris Penn was his best yeah. friend. Yeah. It's funny, right. like all my references to Footloose have come from Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a terrible remake in the uh, 2000s. <laughs> uh, what do we got next? Grease 2. Yikes. Oh boy. I know there's some people that actually like defend this movie. Um, but I, I mean, aside from, you know, early Michelle Pfeiffer, mm-hmm. there's really no reason to watch this film. <laughs> Yeah. Originally titled "More Grease," <laughs> more grease, <laughs> more grease, greasier. You know, it's funny. It's like I'm noticing, like these films, of course, in the '80s and '90s, have a lot more like explicit sex and 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 you know debauchery and things like that. But you wouldn't know it by the titles. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you know <laughs> what was that one uh, 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 Hellcats or whatever the fuck it was called, High School Hellcats. <laughs> Uh, what do we got? Heathers. I always thought Heathers. the Heathers was a 90s film. Oh, it's 1989. That's kind of why. That's kind of close. It's it, all, those, all those movies that came out in 1989 just feel like 1990s to me. Yeah. Uh, so it's like Heathers. I think Dead Poet Society was 89. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, yeah, I, I always say like, oh, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a movie that is bringing in the 90s. Uh, you got Christian Slater, you got Winona Ryder. Dan Doherty. Yeah, very, very like 90s type plot too. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's a teen, it's a dark teen comedy uh, about two kids, you know, basically murdering <laughs> all these people at their school. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen this one in a while. I Probably the last time I saw it was probably in the 90s. Not I don't movie, not think I've ever seen it in its entirety. I'm sure I've caught bits and pieces, but I don't think I've watched it from beginning to end. I probably, I think the last time I saw it, I probably took a date to the movies to see it or some shit. I don't even remember. Or, or watched it with a girl I was dating. <laughs> well, our next movie should have been on our last list. Yeah, our next movie is based on a true story, Hoosiers. Mm-hmm. Love this movie. Well, we didn't, yeah. we didn't use sports films on our last list, remember? Yes, we did. Oh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> we didn't use war movies. What, there were war a lot movies. Of war movies. movies. Yeah, I said we, we should have excluded have skipped this. The, yeah, we should have excluded that. But yeah, Hoosiers could have been. But our, it is a good list. movie. Great movie. Gene Hackman, Dennis Hopper, Oscar Dennis nominated Hopper. role for Dennis Hopper. And he should have mm-hmm. got it. Oh my God, he's so good. <laughs> he's so good in that film. Barbara Archie. Mm-hmm. You know, and then Terry a bunch Belfonte. of like uh, Harry Belafonte. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Here we go. <laughs> Billy Crystal, <laughs> Sean Bean. <laughs> there you go. Hoosiers was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress hmm. as being a cultural, historical, and okay. I can't even. Is that, that in the Wikipedia entry? Yeah, the last, the last line. 
So it was, where am I at? Here? Aesthetically? Aesthetically, oh, aesthetically yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm not the English teacher here. <laughs> hey, yeah. he is, and it just throws me off. <laughs> <laughs> aesthetically, because of the. There's two the, veils next to each other. Basically Can't saying happen. that the, That's the beginning uh, of a word. <laughs> it wasn't. Just, it wasn't just the plot and the cultural implications, but sort of like the the look of it and the cinematography and all that were worthy of preservation. Yeah, and I agree. It's 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 definitely mm -hmm. a classic film. I remember watching it the first time I watched it was in in grade school. It was like one of those like afternoons where like uh, for some reason they had us all in the gym together, like all the grades, and we watched Hoosiers. <laughs> um, where are we at now? Johnny be good. Johnny be good. Oh, not to if, if to believe in Lupa. What's that? Soviet film. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm, you know. I'm staying away from the foreign films now, or I'm trying to at least. Johnny B. Good yeah. stars uh, good. Anthony Michael Hall, who was uh, Iron Man. the king of teen movies king in the 1980s. Movies in the 80s. Yeah, he was in uh, Breakfast Club. He was in, um, what was the Molly Ringwald film he was in? He was in uh, 16 Candles. 16 Candles, yeah. Which he was in list, Weird yeah. Science. I love Weird yeah. Science. <laughs> Uma Thurman. Iron Man. Uh, <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> it's Anthony Michael Hall, Uma Thurman, and Iron Man. <laughs> Robert All Downey Gleason, Jr. Steve James, Jennifer Tilly, Uma Thurman, and Harry Belafonte. <laughs> Harry Belafonte. <laughs> He's in everything. Yeah. And then the, the next one is definitely an 80s film, man. Just, Just one guys. of the guys. <laughs> yeah. A film about a girl pretending to be a guy. <laughs> It's just that you look so cute today. <laughs> it says it's a loose adaptation of William Shakespeare's Fifth Night, a Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night, yeah. So is um, uh, uh um, fuck, I can't think of name. No, because it's kind of like almost a that? remake of just one of the guys. It's um, she's all that. No, oh. uh, she's the man. She's the oh, or she's the. I think it's she's the man or something. It's. Uh, Are you sure it's not Tootsie? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is based on Twelfth Night from Shakespeare. Um, he's right here. I'm going to bring him on for you. He's going to tell you that uh, Twelfth Night is about a woman <laughs> pretending to be a man to get close to the man that she's in love with, but he loves another woman, and, you know, uh, Shakespearean hilarity ensues. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, She's the Man with Amanda Bynes, which came out in the 90s, I believe, or early 2000s, is also a, a, an adaptation of Twelfth Night. Lucas. Lucas. This was the original slow clap. This is where <laughs> it came from. Lucas is where the original slow clap came from? That's this right. Is, this is where Corey mm. Heyman got his start. <laughs> Corey Heyman, Charlie Sheen, Courtney Carrie Green. Green. Yeah. What are Winona you Ryder. The theatrical Good debut for Winona Ryder and Lucas. Romantic comedy drama. About an intelligent and nerdy 14 year old high school student in suburban Chicago and his attraction to an older girl that just moved to town. Funny, a lot of these like tropes seem like they, they developed in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Was this also a, um, a John Hughes movie? Lucas? I think anything in the 80s associated with Chicago is John Hughes oriented. <laughs> Well, for him, when John Hughes was Sherman, Illinois, which is a made-up town uh, that Jay and Silent Bob went searching for. <laughs> but John Hughes was was Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, um, mm. Weird Science. Uh, uh, he didn't do, he produce, but did not direct Home Alone. He written and directed. No, Christopher Columbus did that one. Yeah, he directed that. Um, what else did John Hughes do? Didn't he do the, the Molly Ringwald films? He did not do Pretty in Pink. He did 16 Candles. He, did 16, he, wrote, he wrote and directed 16 Candles. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it, the 80s were, you know, John Hughes's time. What do we got next? We got My Science Project. My Science Project. I have no idea. This is like a C film. Who the hell? No. Well, you know, this film kind of gets lost because it came out the same year. Ready? This is 1985. My Science Project, Back to the Future, Real Genius, and Weird Science all came out in that year. 
Okay. All and film, Real Genius gets films. lost sometimes in that. <laughs> yeah, Real Genius gets lost in that too. All four films are about high school kids, you know, getting into sci-fi hijinks. <laughs> the, the most notable name oh. on the cast here is Dennis Hopper. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> but you notice that Back to the Future is not on this list. Not a high school movie. Not necessarily a high school movie. I had a high school dance. Yeah. <laughs> I you know what it probably is a kind of kind of a high school movie. <laughs> um but like my science project, it really does get lost in the like you say, Kevin, it's like the D list of the film because you would have like mm-hmm. Back to the Future would be like your number one. Yeah. You know, you can weird science and real genius can duke it out for the next spot. <laughs> and then there's my science project. If it was me, I would say weird science. My wife would say real, uh, real genius. Yeah, I like weird science more. I think, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a yeah. Uh, and and we kind of talked about that on the, tw- the twin episode, I think. Yeah. That mm-hmm. these, these four movies came out around the same time. Where we got? Where should we go next? Pretty in pink. Pretty in pink. Pretty in pink. This is directed by Howard Dutch. One of the early. Brat Pack film. You got John oh, Cryer. You got um, Molly Ringwald. Who else are we looking at here? I can't think of his name. Actually, uh, Breakfast Club came out before this. Breakfast Club came out before this? 85. Mm. About love and social got James and Spader. James Andrew Spader, McCarthy. Andrew McCarthy. Harry Dean Stanton. <laughs> Andy Potts. Any pots? Yeah. Any pots. I think I would say this is probably the better of the two films between this and Sixteen Candles. Mm. Because they kind of get like sort of blended together, I think. And a yeah. lot a lot of it has to do with, you know, Molly Ringwald's in both. Um but actually Sixteen Candles came before this as well. Hey. Hey. The next one, the principal. The principal. Jim Belushi and Louis Gossip Jr. And Ray Don Chong. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This is uh, it's, a, it's, it's a classic 80s B movie. Yeah, like about exploitative school. action film. At a mm-hmm. high school where the students major in arson, extortion, and assault. The new principal and head of security just might be crazy enough to turn things around. It's like it's like the poor man's version of Stand By Me, or not Stand By Me, uh, Stand and Deliver and Lean On Me. <laughs> Both of which I think, wait, hold on. Lean <laughs> oh, on why Me. Why Lean On Me on this? But... Lean On Me was 89. Lean On Me that was 89. Been, that, that, that should be on here. of a high school movie. Yeah, and Stand and Deliver, I think, was in the 80s as well. Stand and yeah. Deliver was 88. Yeah. Yeah. So this is yeah. uh, this uh, this Wikipedia thing is lacking, this is lacking man. lacking exactly. yeah a ton of lacking it does include prom night though which is a 1980 slasher film <laughs> starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen it does not put on Nightmare on Elm Street it does not have Nightmare on Elm Street on there now that is uh, I mean high school the, film well the kids he's killing are are high school he, he was killed in the high school boiler room by the parents okay. He was, like the, he was like the high school janitor. <laughs> uh, we do have Risky Business. Risky Business. I would say this is the one that made Tom Cruise Tom Cruise. Yeah. And Rebecca De Mornay. Oh, man. Another yeah. like, early 80s crush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yet that iconic scene of him, you know, dancing in his shirt and all that shit. <laughs> Pantsless. What do we got? We got 16 Candles, which we kind of talked about a little bit. And one of my favorite films from the 80s. It's so stupid. I love it. Summer School. Oh. Summer School. Oh, I love Summer School. <laughs> Student Bodies? Oh. <laughs> Student Bodies. Summer School, oh, school. with Mark Harmon. Yeah. <laughs> take your chairs. Where should we take there them? There you go. The kid that was locked in the bathroom for six weeks got a 90. <laughs> <laughs> My zipper got stuck. My zipper got stuck. <laughs> Percy Alley, Courtney Thorne Smith. Man, I had such a crush on her in this film, man. Mm-hmm. Courtney Thorne, Thorne Smith was another like late 80s crush between this and Revenge of the Nerds Part 2. 
I like uh, her, but I like Shawnee Smith too. Shawnee Smith, Quirkies. yeah, she was the pregnant mm-hmm. girl, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Quirky's is not on this list. Quirky's is not on this list. Quirky should be on this list. God, oh, God. damn, man! If if uh, if uh, you know Andy Hardy's private secretary is on this list, sure some Quirky's. <laughs> oh, Quirky's is a nightmare. Quirky's is the like predecessor of all raunchy sex comedies. <clears throat> like you wouldn't uh, have American, been... you wouldn't have American oh. Pie without Porgies. Oh, uh, Revenge of the Nerds is, is college, so that wouldn't be on. Revenge of the Nerds is college. Teen Wolf is on this list. Teen Wolf is definitely Teen a high school is... film. Oh, you didn't want to talk about teachers? Teachers, <laughs> I love teachers. Anybody ever seen <laughs> this film? Be... No. Oh, this is a great movie. Uh, this is uh, again 1984. Yeah, it's Nick Nolte, Joe Beth Williams, Ralph Macchio, Judd Hirsch. So <laughs> it's a movie about a, a high school in, I think it's in New York. Like a real like, like downtrodden neighborhood, low economic status kind of thing. The teachers in the school are all burnt out. You uh, know, inner city, Columbus, Ohio. Oh, Columbus, okay, but they're all like tired of dealing with the red tape and all that stuff. Ralph Macchio is like one of the troublemaker kids in the school. Uh, <laughs> Nick Nolte plays like that teacher who doesn't like give a shit anymore. Um, but the oh, thing, so <laughs> the thing that I love about it is is like all the okay. teachers. There's something crazy about all of them. There's this one teacher in the movie, they call him Ditto, because all he does is hand out copy papers to the kids every class. And he sits at his desk. They sit at their desks. They don't even look at him. Their desks are facing the other way. They, <laughs> they walk in, they get the papers off his desk, they pass them out. And then the whole class, he sits there reading his newspaper while the kids fill out these sheets. And then at the end of the class, they turn them in. So they do this every day. And then one day he dies at his desk and nobody knows. Because oh, he never moves. He just sits here reading the paper all day. So they leave him at the desk and they don't know that he's dead till the next day when the janitor finds him. <laughs> and then they have another teacher there. He's a history teacher. He's a substitute teacher teaching history and he turns out to be the best teacher on the staff. All the kids love him. He's, he's a, a very entertaining teacher until you discover that he's an escaped mental patient. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the best teacher on the staff. <laughs> Good it's Lord. it's a uh, very entertaining, a little very uh, uh, unknown film, man. It's a good film. Teachers, Teen Wolf, Three O'clock High. Three o'clock high. It was a movie with um uh, uh what's his name? Oh shit, I can't think of the actor's name. I gotta look it up. Richard Chris. Oh. Uh... Uh, Casey Shamasco. Uh, plays a, a. It's like a, a movie about you know getting into a fight at the end of school. And then hmm. uh, I think we can finish with these two films, Wildcats. Yep. Early Goldie Hawn film where she becomes the, yeah. the early first Wesley Snipes and Wesley Snipes Woody and Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. Yeah, uh, and it's yes. the, their film debut, and she's yeah. the female coach of a high school football team. And <laughs> this is another really bad film, but it's so eighties zapped. 1982 American teen sex comedy starring Scott Baio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we talked point. about this at Yeah, one point. I think we talked about it at one point because it's a movie about a high school student who gets telekinetic powers and basically uses them to like take girls' clothes off. Mm, <laughs> Before we move into the 90s, yeah. we've gone through a lot of movies with um, uh, similar actors and actresses. Who would you say? If you had to pick a 1980s prom king and queen mm. of actors and actresses who have been in these movies, who do you think is the quintessential 80s actor and actress uh, for for high school movies? Uh, Molly Ringwald definitely is the prom queen. Um, uh, do you think? I think so. Yeah. I was going to say Leah Thompson. Close runner up. Yeah, close runner but up. Talk about high school films. You talk about somebody like yeah. synonymous with high school films, and yeah, I would say I the, the prom king is probably uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony Michael Hall, I think that was, one, yeah. But um, the two of them are both like you know, like John Hughes veterans as well. Mm-hmm. Where is? I'm missing another movie on here. What's that? Um. Wolverine. <laughs> start I don't off know. In high I, I mean, they start Red off in Dawn. High school. Yeah, Red, Red Dawn. Dawn. Yeah. They start off in high school, and they're all high school kids except for like one. <laughs> Until the Soviets come. Yeah. Then <laughs> high school, school kind of takes the back the now, now. And then, it, and then it becomes I was a teenage <laughs> Rambo. 
<laughs> exactly. Uh, so let's get into the 90s, 90s, 90s. So Ten not as good ones in the 90s, you. too. What's that? Ten Things I Hate About You. Ten Things I Hate About You, which is another mm-hmm. Shakespeare adaptation. It is an adaptation of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. This is a story about a woman who wants to get married, but she's not allowed to get married until her sister gets married. They just transfer it to high school where the sister is not allowed to date until the other sister starts dating. <laughs> and you have it's early. It's the uh, American film debut for Heath Ledger. Mm-hmm. It's uh, Joey Gordon-Levitt. Uh, yeah, Julia, Julia Stiles. Stiles uh, Larissa Olenek. Olenek. Who was a Nickelodeon actor at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, David Crumoltz, you know, It's a, a lot of like young actors that <laughs> are still kicking it today. Uh, my wife loves this film. Ten Things I Hate About You is one of her favorites. I like, enjoy it. Comedies. It's fun. It's a good movie. Mm. It's enjoyable. It's not anything mm-hmm. like <clears throat> like it's not a raunchy teen comedy per se, uh, but it's enjoyable. But if you want raunchy, then you got American Pie. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> one time at this band one camp. time at band camp. One time band camp, and then there's uh, uh, Nadia. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nadia. Shannon Elizabeth. Stifler. Stifler. <laughs> he was a flash in the Stifler's pan of mama. an actor if I've ever heard. I think most of them were in that in that show in that movie. Like I don't see True. Shannon Elizabeth anymore. I don't Mm-mm. see you don't see what's her face anymore because she went fucking nuts. Uh Tara Reed. Tara Reed. Yeah. Mina, Mina Savari, I still see once in a while in, in various things. Um Allison Hannigan. Allison Hannigan, of course. Allison Hannigan She's the one I think had okay. the best had the you know the best career trick. <laughs> Natasha Leone did okay too. Yeah. Uh she's got that show on Netflix now, uh, uh mm-hmm. Russian Doll. Russian Doll. Yeah. Um Jason but Biggs she was also, yeah. kinda went on to do like some other raunchy comedies in the nineties, but not much else. He was on uh Orange is the New Black though, I believe. So is Natasha Leone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, and then you have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Not the TV show, the film that the TV show is based ooh, on. Uh, ooh, yes, uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, Rubens. Uh, e, ah. Pee Wee Herman, Paul Rubens as a vampire. Rucker Hauer as the mm-hmm. lord of the vampires. Uh, got, Christy Swanson as Buffy. You got mm-hmm. Donald Sutherland. Donald so Sutherland Luke, Luke the, Perry. Uh, Luke yeah, Perry. Uh, mm-hmm. Hillary Swank. Hillary Swank's <laughs> first role. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was, it, was, was it or movies. was it the next Karate Kid? I think they came out around the same time. I want to okay. say, um, but it's a very small role in Buffy. She's not like a star; like she's the no, main she's character. She's just a next friend of Buffy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> this movie was not good. <laughs> what Buffy? Buffy. It was not good. I like the Buffy film. Yeah, it's I enjoyable. like what it is. Like you can't. It's a guilty pleasure. You can't watch <laughs> it. it. You can't compare it to the TV show because they're two different animals. It's, well, it's they are. you know they're not it they they share the name but they're not really the same film same story right. you know though though they do mention it in the TV show about this high school <laughs> yeah <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> um clueless clueless this is a fun Alicia film too Silverstone. this oh is Ali- this is the film gosh. that made Alicia Silverstone Alicia Silverstone yeah, Brittany Murphy um, too. Murphy, Paul Rudd. This is like a quintessential '90s, you know, teen comedy. I think. What I love is that Paul Rudd looks exactly the same as, as he does when this movie came out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, he's a vampire. Yes. This is uh, based on Jane Austen's novel Emma. Emma. Yeah. Um, so it's another like you know '90s film based on classic literature, but made digestible for the teens of the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. As if. Uh, I can watch this. This okay. isn't this isn't classic, you know, classical <laughs> literature. This is based on the movie. movie. And then you read Here's the novel with the kids, and they want to hate they hate you for it. Just like when okay. I want to watch that, you know, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. That's cool. <laughs> oh, you can just watch West Side Story, or if you want to watch Taming the Shrew, just watch Ten Things I Hate About You. <laughs> and then we have Kevin's movie. And we have Kevin's movie with that 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 uh, vixen of all vixens, Fruza Balk. <laughs> there were four vixens in this movie, okay? Robin <laughs> Tooney, Robin Tooney, Robin Nev, Tooney Campbell, Nev Campbell, Rachel, Rachel True. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the, the lesser known of the four, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were all they were all they were all know, 
those are 90 pretty attractive girls yes 490 foxes yeah right there <laughs> mm-hmm. well it's, if a, you, if it's you a fun movie it, to craft Kev, if you click, click on it and you cross their names you get pictures of them now <laughs> I, it also had uh what's her name uh the one that was married to ben stiller christine oh um christine taylor christine taylor yeah yep yeah. And I think it was an early uh, movie for Skeet Ulrich, too. <laughs> Skeet Ulrich. Skeet Ulrich. Oh, my and God. Brecken Myers. <laughs> uh, those, those names of 90s actors. Yes. Skeet and Brecken. <laughs> Skeet and Brecken. The Craft. The Craft is a fun film, though. Yeah. It's a Halloween movie. I'd watch that around yeah. Halloween. Uh, then you got Dangerous Minds here with Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. came out in 95. Yeah. Uh, this... I, I tell you, the only thing that that comes out of that movie for me is the Coolio song. <laughs> yeah, and thereby the Weird Al Yankovic. Song. The Weird Al Yankovic song. <laughs> yeah, it was the uh, Living in an Amish Paradise. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer's a badass. Yeah, the badass teacher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have to talk about Days Con- Confused so that our Twitter uh, followers don't get mad. Nineteen eighty-three coming of age comedy. Uh, I know one of the things that we were asked to point out is that it is not just a stoner comedy. No. Um, like people kind of get the, the idea that it's a stoner comedy because of the Matthew McConaughey stuff in the film. Mm-hmm. And because he's admitted that he was actually high while film, filming some of the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he came up with the all right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, you know, um, but I mean, he was an Affleck, so he had to be stuck. Oh. Yeah, but there was a lot more. I mean, there was a lot more going on in that film than that. And it's a fucking cast, man. Jason yeah. London, Joey Lauren Adams, Mila Jovovich, Roy Cochran, Adam Goldberg, mm-hmm. uh, uh, was it? Cole Hauser, uh, Ben Affleck, uh, uh, who else? Park, Parker, Posey, Parker Posey, Matthew McConaughey, Nikki Cat. Like these are like it's a stacked cast, man, for this film. It's also yeah. uh, directed by Richard Linkletter, who's you know a, a very prolific filmmaker too, and mm-hmm. uh, he always has has something that he's going for in his films. I want to see what the tagline is on this. Let's see. It was the last day of school in 1976, a time they'd never forget, if only they could remember. <laughs> Dazed and confused. See it with a bud. <laughs> it's easy to think it's a stoner film when tagline and, <laughs> you know, kind exactly. of takes it out. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. But really, it's, it's, you know, about a group of friends on their last day of school. It kind of follows the... Uh, the uh american graffiti track because that's like a similar storyline you know just that last day of school yeah not, yeah but it kind of gets you're... lumped in there with half-baked yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> here was such pops of weed <laughs> uh what do we got where are we going to go next for this uh, um, well, I mean, we could touch on Drive Me Crazy, but uh, I don't yeah, really want I don't to. Care. Yeah, I don't want to. Well, I would want, like to mention the election. Election uh, yeah. is fucking Johnson funny. What were you saying, Mike? With, you don't want detention to seize at Johnson High with Freddie Prince Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> siege. Hostage High, it says on the post. It's got two different names. <laughs> now, election, uh, election is uh, uh, kind of a... Um, Underrated film from the nineties, I think. Mm-hmm. It's also nineteen ninety nine, so it's right on the cusp there too. So it kind of gets right. Uh, but it's uh, early Reese Witherspoon, Matthew Broderick. She's the yep. little goody two She's... shoes running for president, and he's the teacher that hates her. <laughs> <laughs> so he tries tries to rig the election so she doesn't get uh, nominated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, uh, yeah a, a film that doesn't get that much uh, notice, I think. Because of films like Encino Man. Encino Man. <laughs> Encino Man. Thank you, Paulie Shore. Thank you, Paulie Thank Shore. We send the ch- uh, <laughs> That's all I remember from that fucking film. That and I think it's is it Brendan Fraser's debut? I think so. I think it's Brendan. Uh, so it's Sean Astin, Brendan Fraser, Paulie Shore. Was this his debut or was his debut in um, School Ties? I don't know. I'd have to look up his. Uh, is IMDb, I think, to, to know, but um, I know that this is the movie that introduced him to me, at least, because I think it's the first movie yeah. I've seen that he was in. Let's see here. Brendan Fraser, America's favorite actor. 
uh, filmography. Here we go. First movie was a TV movie called Child of Darkness, Child of Light. Okay. And then his first main film that wasn't a TV movie was Encino Man. And School Ties and Encino Man came out in the same, same year. So in one film, he's playing a uh, Cro-Magnon man, and in the other film, he's playing a uh, very smart student at a boarding school <laughs> in the same year. Well, he's Jewish, and he's not in, in a Catholic school. In a yeah. Catholic school, and that's on our list here, too, School Ties. What isn't on our list is uh, Dead Poet Society. That is one. Mm-hmm. Of them. Dead Poet Society should be on this list. This Wicked. There's Peace. another one that's not on this list, and I wanted to mention when we got around to it. But what is that? Rushmore. Oh yeah, it's uh, 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 Wes Anderson. Yeah, his second movie. Yeah, first movie was. I would uh, say Bottle a quintessential uh, high school movie. It is. It's uh, and one of Bill Murray's first <laughs> like real. Sort of like dramatic roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to talk about Ernest Goes to School. <laughs> How about a goofy movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's more of a summer or summer movie. <laughs> they, they're all on vacation in that. Then we have the most, the most disturbing movie ever made in the 90s. Came out in 1999. Never been kissed. <laughs> I say it's disturbing because Drew Barrymore plays an adult who pretends to be a teenager so she can go back to high school and 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 do an article on it. And you find out she was never kissed in high school. She falls in love with the teacher. The teacher falls in love with her. Not knowing that she's not a teenager at that point. <laughs> it's, yeah. David Arquette plays her brother who pretends to go back to high school as well so he can like nail high school chicks and he's like 37. And get on the baseball team. <laughs> it's such a fucking weird movie. Mm. And you got the Rage, Carrie 2. Never saw it. <laughs> no. School Tie Scream, as I said, as you, you know, you're talking about horror genre films. We had uh, mm-hmm. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street in the 80s, and we got Scream in the 90s. Wes Craven yep. film. Another Nev Campbell. <laughs> film, David Arquette, Courtney Cox, Matthew Lillard, Rose McGow, and Skeet back again. Skeet! And Drew Barrymore. Sister Act 2, back in the habit. <laughs> you, you, want to talk about, you want to talk about She's All That? Oh, She's All That. I skipped, I skipped Kevin's favorite film from the... Uh... <laughs> That's right. She's All That with Rachel Lee Cook. You know, I just... was tired of seeing her just smack around a... a, a, a Frying pan, saying, "This is your brain on drugs." No, I'm like, I, I love this. Is the movie where like she she wears glasses and puts her hair in a ponytail, and she's ugly all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. It, you know, somehow <laughs> that '90s trope. <laughs> this also had Anna Paquin in it, I think. Uh she's all that. It might have. I don't know. I haven't. This is another one I haven't seen in forever. Yeah, and a fact was in it. Freddie Prince Jr., Rachel Lee Cook, Matthew Lillard again, Paul Walker, Kevin Pollack, Kieran Culkin, Usher, <laughs> and Anna Paquin. Yeah. And then what else we got here? Uh, to Sir with Love, too. Sir with this love time, too. I really mean it. Wow. Sorry, I'm actually sorry. made a sequel. <laughs> they have a set sequel on here, but they don't have toy soldiers. I know. This uh, this film, man, this this list is like really uh, pissing me off. Wasn't Toy Soldiers about the toys that come alive? <laughs> no, that was Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Little Soldiers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Small soldiers, small That's soldiers. It. Yeah, Toy Soldiers <laughs> is uh, Will Wheaton, Sean Austin. Yeah, and they're like students Will at a Austin boarding Jr. school, and the boarding school gets taken over by terrorists or some shit. And so well, it's just... Red Dawn in the in 90s. the school, <laughs> in the school for the kids. That... No, 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 because you know Will Wheat without like you know Al Pacino and Scarface. <laughs> yeah, I know Will Wheaton gets blown away in that film, man. He gets like <laughs> shut up. He, like... gets, he gets like the, he gets the Sonny Corleone treatment in that film. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and then, I told uh... you to shut up, right? So like <laughs> Varsity Blues, Varsity Blues, starring Dawson's Creek. Yes, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that takes us to the 2000s here. Um, I I don't know if I'm going to go through everything on this list. No, I look at seen, all these. There's a lot of fucking movies, and I can tell you I haven't seen 
I never saw any of the high school musicals, for Christ's sake. No. <laughs> and there's a lot of dumb ones in the 2000s, man. So you got, uh, let's, like, let's look at just like. Let's see here. American Pie seven. presents Bandcamp. <laughs> We've already covered American Pie. Yeah. Uh, um, Brats, nothing in the A's. Bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. The cheerleader film. Yeah. Uh, Carrie, the remake. <laughs> yep. A Cinderella story. <laughs> Coach Carter. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. <laughs> uh, that's a um, Lindsay Lohan film, I believe. Yes, it is. Crazy Beautiful is a uh, film of Kurtz and Dunst. Debs. I've seen Debs. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... well, Kevin Fever, too. <laughs> <laughs> Poor film. Finding Forrester. That's actually a pretty good Finding one. Finding Forrester. That is a good one. That's uh, <laughs> Sean Connery. the chess player, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's the he's a uh, he's a writer. He's a writer. And, no, that's uh, right. it's a writer. He, he becomes friends with Sean Connery, who's reclusive writer. Kind of, he's he's kind of based on like JD Salinger's character. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty good movie. Um, Friday Night Lights. It's a great film too. High school football. A lot like Varsity Blues. Like, well. Yes and no. I mean, because it does. It's about like that Texan, you know, love for football, like high school football. Uh, but this mm-hmm. one, this one is based on a true story. This is a uh, 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 based on a, a, a book that was like kind of covering the the insanity that is Texas football in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, is Girl, next Girl, next Girl next door. Girl next door. Alicia Cuthbert. Oh, Alicia Cuthbert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When she was at uh, on uh, twenty four. Mm-hmm. And then you got the high school musical films, The Hot mm-hmm. Chick with uh, Rob Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you like how many of these I have not seen, and I've watched a lot of bad movies, man. <laughs> <laughs> legally Blonde. I've seen Legally Blonde. I don't know what that's actually Legally, legally Blonde. Blondes. Yeah, well, where's the first yes. one? Is that in the '90s? Legally Blonde. I think so. Okay. Well, Legally Blonde. Okay. So here's one worth mentioning because yeah. this I, I well, enjoy Legally this Blonde movie. was a college film. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mean Girls. Yes. Mean Girls is a great high school movie. It's, it's on the list there. It's on the list. Yeah. It's, it's a, no, it's, I know. It's I'm one that's uh, still one like that we've popular. all seen. It's 18 years later. It's still it's still mm-hmm. an amazingly popular film. Yeah. I mean, and, a, I know it's a Lindsay Lohan film, but I think like the one who the two people uh, that came out of this the most were Rachel McAdams and Amanda Seyfried. Mm-hmm. You know, oh. and Tina Fey. Lindsay Lohan was the 2000s of Ah, yeah, Teen yeah. Movies. Mm-hmm. You also have and the... this was uh, this was Tina Fey branching out into movies after doing SNL for so long. Yeah, she wrote the screenplay for the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have Jennifer's Body, which starred uh, Megan Fox. Yeah, um, where she plays a uh, she's a succubus in that film <laughs> with two two thumbs. <laughs> with two thumbs. <laughs> Not another teen movie, which is a spoof of all the teen films like American Pie. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It actually stars uh, Chris Evans, <laughs> one of his early roles. Oh wow! Yeah, he plays the jock character. Doesn't um, he also play that in um, what's his name versus the world versus the universe? Uh, oh, Scott, uh, Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim versus the Scott Pilgrim versus the world or something. Yes, he plays like a yeah, like he's like a skateboarder or something like that. Um, you know what? I don't see. I'm thinking about it now. Um, I was thinking about it. Now I can't remember what the fuck it was I was thinking about. Oh, is Dangerous Liaisons? Uh, not Dangerous Liaisons. Uh, oh. You know um, what I'm talking about. Um, yes. The one with Michelle. Uh, Sarah Michelle Sarah Gellar. Michelle. That's mm-hmm. a high school film, right? Uh, I think so. It's, I mean, uh, in I, the sense that they're in high school. It's, but it's, there's very little that actually goes on in high school. Okay, and it's it's based on the Dangerous Liaisons. It's based on films. Dangerous Liaisons, yeah. Why can't I think of the name of it? I don't know, but she was so hot. <laughs> My God. Jesus, why can't I think of the name of this film? Hold on. Uh, I got you. I got you. Hold on. You got me? Yeah, give me one second. Sarah Michelle Geller. She was in... Come on. Cruel intentions. Cruel intentions. That's the that's that's cruel cool. intentions. Yeah. What else we got here? We got the Princess Diaries. Introduced the yeah. world to Anne Hathaway. 
Mm. The Q film. Uh, remember the Titans. Yeah. I like this one. Yeah. I missed radio. I missed radio. Oh yeah, that's the one with uh, with Cuba Gooding Jr. Is that high school? I mean, it has to do with a high school football team, but it's not about the high school. I mean, it's about this guy that you know, this mentally handicapped guy who hung around with the high school or something. Oh, you mean um, the Water Boy? Yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a college film. Uh, <laughs> remember the Titans? I mean, even though it's not, you know, uh, uh, historically accurate, <laughs> still a fun film. Scary, scary movie. movie. Scary movie. Uh, I guess because it's based on Scream. She's the man. That's the one I was saying with Amanda Bynes. It's mm-hmm. another another film based on Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. Before she lost her mind. Yeah. What the fuck is this movie? Slapper. Slapper. She's, she's French. <laughs> <laughs> a teen black comedy film. Teen black comedy <laughs> film starring Piper Pirabu and Jane McGregor. Never. Oh, it's a ABC Family film, so it's like a TV film. Super bad. Do you, don't you miss the after school specials? Oh yeah. <laughs> Those are all high school movies. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably one of the best of the two thousands is Super Bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonah Hill, uh, uh, Michael Sarah, Seth Rogen, Bill Hader. <laughs> Movie about teenagers trying to, you know, find alcohol for the party that they're having right before they dra- graduate high school. That old chestnut. <laughs> one of Emma Stone's first ones. One Emma, I think it is. It might be Emma Stone's very first film. I know it's McLovin's first film. <laughs> <laughs> Walking on Dead Fish. What the fuck is that movie? It's a documentary about a small town high school football team. <laughs> okay. And then we got the 2010s and 20s. Hold on, hold on. I got to go back to the 90s for a second. Cause to the well, 90s. Well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, man. Wait. I forgot to mention that they missed it. What's that? Can't hardly wait. Can't hardly wait. Isn't that uh, Can't Jennifer hardly Love Hewitt? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. As Jennifer Love Hewitt. I mean, that's got a lot of big names in it. I know Jennifer Love Hewitt so, is the one that I... Sorry about that. I was forgetting <laughs> That's from the 90s, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these Wikipedia lists, man. They're, we got to work on this later. We got to edit some shit. That was 98. 98. The 20, the 20 yeah. That had okay. Seth Green. That had... Uh, was it um, Giovanni Rubisi? Ethan Embry. Ethan Embry, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, Ethan Embry, Lauren Ambrose, Charlie Court, Corsmo. That's another uh, uh, high school film from the 90s, and it's like a horror film. It's uh, Idle Hands. Yes. <laughs> Jessica Alba was Jessica in that Alba one. Jessica Alba was in that one, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so in uh, the 2010s, you got 21 Jump Street, which is uh, Joan Jonah Hill and, and uh, Channing Tatum. It's actually a pretty funny movie. Uh, you know, I, I'm not one typically for those like movies based on TV shows, but it it ha- it pokes enough fun at the TV show to be actually kind of like something new. I um, have a question. Mm-hmm. How is the Avenueville Terror and the Awakening high school movies? I don't know. I've never seen either. <laughs> so I couldn't well, they're based on the the hauntings of a house. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it has high school kids in it. I don't know. And the uh, A list is a film called Assassination Nation. I just watched this recently. It's a black comedy, like satire film uh, about a little small town where somebody starts uh, revealing people's secrets via group text messages. And it it takes the town, uh, you know, not too long for the town starts turning on itself. And everybody starts trying to like kill each other <laughs> to try to hide their secrets. It's a, a pretty twisted film, but it's kind of it's pretty entertaining. What else we got? Uh, Book Smart. <laughs> Book Smart's a good movie. This is um, <clears throat> Beanie Fe- uh, Feldstein, who is actually Jonah Hill's younger sister, and Caitlin Deaver, who's like an up and coming actress. Uh, and it's another one of those like coming of age buddy films that take place in high school as the students are getting ready to graduate, and these two best friends don't know, you know, where life's going to take them once they go to college and all that sort of stuff. New question. Yeah. 
How many remakes of Carrie can we have in a, on a list? I don't know. I just noticed that too. We have another remake of Carrie. <laughs> this is the one I think with um, what's her face, Hit Girl from uh, Kick Ass, Chloe Grace Moretz. She's in that one. Then we got a bunch of like Indian films here. It looks like. <laughs> what else do we got? That's worth um, talking about. The the, the, the Duff. Duff. The Duff's a, a pretty. It's a cute film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Duff stands for uh, was it uh, design uh, designated ugly, ugly fat, fat friend. friend? Yeah. Oh Jesus! And the designated ugly fat friend is the daughter from Independence Day, the daughter of the president. Oh good. Lord. And yeah, I'm, May, uh, May May Whitman. And I'm looking at the picture of her on the poster, and I don't know where the ugly fat friend part comes in because mm -hmm. <laughs> she's not ugly fat or you know whatever. The Duff. Easy A. Easy A, which is uh, Emma, oh. Emma Stone. Mm -hmm. And this one is another oh, one that takes the the heavy uh, plot of classic literature and makes it palatable for teenagers because mm -hmm. Easy A is based on the Scarlet Letter. <laughs> and it stars Emma Stone, Stanley Tucci, Patricia Clarkson, Thomas Aiden Church, Amanda Bynes, Lisa Kudrow. You know, it's... it's uh, this is like, you know, Super Bad was her first film. This is the film that kind of made Emma Stone a, uh, a household name. The next one in the E's is Edge of 17. This is a great film. Yeah. Woody Harrelson. It's Woody Harrelson, Haley Steinfeld, and she's a. Kira Sedgwick. Yeah, yeah. she's a, a 17 year old high school student struggling to find like you know herself and figure out what she wants and woody harrelson is her favorite teacher and she often like goes to him for like advice and stuff and his reactions to her are the best because he's like one of those like <laughs> fuck it kind of teachers <laughs> right they have some like really funny conversations together it's a it's a, a really good movie um and i'm just gonna like kind of fly through this now here f for prom <laughs> what's that f, f for f prom, for prom. Okay. <laughs> F the prom. It just caught my attention. <laughs> we got Kick Ass and Kick Ass Two. Now Kick Ass is is I, I mean I would say Kick Ass maybe is high school film because he is in high school in that film. Uh hmm. Kick Ass Two, I don't think so as much. Um next one on this list I think deserves some attention is Lady Bird, which stars Cher yeah. Cher uh, Saoirse Ronan. Um, real, another coming of age comedy drama film from 2017. Uh, had a lot of nominations at the Oscars that year. Very well acted film. Amazing that you know it's amazing how like actors from like England and Ireland can come over here and play American accents so well, mm -hmm. but American yeah. actors can't do the British accents. <laughs> uh, oh shit. Especially her, like if you ever hear, hello there, governor. You ever hear Saoirse Ronan in, in in an interview talk with her natural accent, and it's like Jesus, how do you do the American accent so well? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Perks of being a wallflower. I'm Perks. jumping ahead go, quite a bit. Go for it. Yeah. You know what Perks I'm of being a wallflower is one of my favorites. Stars uh, Hermione Granger. It stars <laughs> Hermione Granger. It's got um. Logan Lerman. The guy who lost his mind recently, Ezra Miller. Yeah. <laughs> Logan Ler Loga Lerman. Logan Lerman. Mm -hmm. um, but Mae Whitman's in this one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Paul Rudd, John Cusack. It's, it's got a great cast. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. <laughs> uh, next on the list is Power Rangers. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys didn't skip the Power Rangers, Fucking right? Power Rangers. Get the hell out of here. Ever since they got rid of Amy Jo Johnson, I just can't keep it. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I don't really see anything else on here really worth mentioning. So I'm not going to get into the 2020 since they just started and <laughs> we're getting pretty long on the episode here anyway. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to do Teen Lust? Teen Lust? No, yeah. I'd rather watch uh, Andy Hardy's Private Secretary. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing. 
Yeah, the Urban Legends. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. I hope I have the record button. Go. There we go. I hit the record button. We're good. Yeah. Join us this evening for episode 72, Algebra, Bad Lunch, and Infidelity, the Evolution of High School Cinema. I hope you uh, learned some things tonight like we learned. We learned that the 40s and 50s weren't as innocent as I thought they were going to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't even go into some of the uninnocent stuff that yeah. we found in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. I probably <laughs> should have rearranged some of the titles for the decades that we talked about. Um, Do we have a favorite decade, gentlemen? Mine... I'm still sticking with my 90s. I'm still sticking with the 80s. I'm I'm divided between the 80s and 90s, but I think the 80s have maybe a slight edge on the 90s. Mm. Just slight edge. <laughs> I'm more of in that 85-95 range, I think. Like, <laughs> 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 I'll hedge my bets that way. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight for episode 72, The Evolution of High School uh, in Cinema. Make sure you join us next week for episode 73. For episode 73, we're going to be looking at films that uh, deal with urban legends, films about urban legends. Should be a fun, if not creepy, episode. Ooh, early Halloween episode. Mm. <laughs> uh, again, thank you for joining us here at the crossroads between pickled and fermented. Mike, do you have any beer wisdom for us this evening? Well, yes, I do. Uh, how do you know if someone likes craft beer? Don't worry. They'll tell you. <laughs> and if they don't like craft beer, they'll be like Kevin's dad and tell you, I just drink regular beer. I just drink regular beer. <laughs> uh, anybody have any final thoughts about their drinks that they had this evening? Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Hi, uh, what does it? Hi, he, he, head high was uh, pretty decent. Not the best one I've had this week, but uh, pretty decent. I was not too big on the first hazy IPA I had, which was the uh, Juice Drop. It was mm -hmm. really, really bitter. Um, yeah. So after I finished that, I went to Crab Cakes and Football Session IPA. Because, That's a good one. Because I knew That's I liked that one, so I wanted one mm -hmm. that I'd enjoy right afterward. Um, but yeah. overall, it wasn't a, a bad night for drinking. <laughs> nah. So we hope you I had one the other... No, no, okay. Go ahead. No, we're gonna say. no, no, no. I was just going to mention another beer I had earlier this week. I think yesterday. Uh, Fry from Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Mm. It was a uh, summer beer. It was very, very good. What kind of like like a summer ale? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, let me look it up real quick. <laughs> um, go ahead. You do your closing. You know, I'll mention it after you're done your closing. <laughs> so, as I said, we just did episode seventy-two. Join us next week for episode seventy-three, Urban Legends. We hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed recording it for you. My name is Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. It's called Sea Breeze Ale <laughs> by Fry Brewing sea in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Sea Breeze Ale. Very good. It's a wheat beer. A wheat beer. Wheat beer. Wheat. 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 The choice of Harry Belafonte. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>